here is an update on Hurricane Sandy. Sandy has 75 mile per hour winds down to 951 millibars. The system is moving northeast and will eventually recurve and make landfall in New Jersey. It doesn't matter where the storm makes landfall though. The storm is very large and it will have large long lasting impacts even well inland and along the coast up and down from New southern New England all the way down to North Carolina. So let's get into the particulars. The storm is going to bend up and eventually make landfall just between Atlantic City and Cape May, New Jersey. And right now we have the stationary front that's moving across eastern Canada and it's extending down towards the Carolinas. Now this system is going to get most of its energy that it's going to regain left here from this front and turn it completely into a nor'easter. Right now it's a hybrid system but eventually it will turn itself completely into a nor'easter and become a very low pressure system, 946 millibars, which most of the models are outputting. You can see this system back here across the west. This is also going to feed some energy into Sandy and also bring some snowfall, probably 6 to 12 inches in the higher elevations, 2400 feet above in uh, West Virginia and southwestern Virginia. And in the valleys, 1 to 3 inches of slushy wet accumulation. So look forward to that. Let's overlay the wind gusts. We have 40, 50 mile per hour from Martha's Vineyard all the way down to eastern New Jersey, Long Island, New York City. We have 30 mile per hour wind gusts over by DC, Baltimore, and 40 and 50 mile per hour gusts out here on Cape Hatteras. The system will continue to live north. All the models pretty much agree and tightly cluster it and move it inland towards Philadelphia, up by Williamsport, and eventually recurving up to the southern tier of New York. And it will affect the St. Lawrence Valley up here with strong winds and eventually go up through Kingston in southern Ontario where it will produce anywhere from 35 to 45 kilometer per hour winds and eventually uh, rainfall rates uh, pretty high up here even in Ontario and Quebec as the system moves up through. So our friends in Canada will also be being affected by this storm. So let's take a look at precipitation amounts. Here we've got uh, precipitation. Uh, most of the precipitation will be south of Interstate 80 in Pennsylvania where we'll get a swath of 6 to 12 inches of rain and up to locally higher amounts of 14 inches around our nation's capital over by Philadelphia and just south of Atlantic City here. This is where the highest amounts will fall. In the southern tier of New York, probably 3 to 6 inches of rain. And further north, the up by Ontario, uh, probably looking at 2 to 4 inches uh, of rain on the order. Um, and so in southern New England, 3 to 6, and up by northern New England, probably about 2 to 4 inches of rain. Um, and back here, we're going to get to the snowfall totals. Uh, here's the snowfall totals, probably 6 to 12 in the higher elevations, locally higher amounts. The higher elevation you are in West Virginia and southwestern Virginia, and extreme western Maryland, I think the, the farthest most west county in Maryland here, along with Morgantown, just south and east of Morgantown, West Virginia here. Um, so that's what we're looking at for snowfall. And let's take a look at uh, the models. ECMWF pushes the system at 946 millibars onto the coast, the New Jersey coast, and heads inland towards Philadelphia, eventually towards Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and recurves it. GFS is very similar, brings it just slightly north near Atlantic City uh, at 947 millibars, brings it in just north of Philadelphia, recurves it up towards right over Scranton by about 3 a.m. on Tuesday morning. Now, let's take a look at why this system is going to take a hard left into the um, east coast here, the northeast coast. There's a blocking, let's take a look at 500 millibar heights here. Here's the height contours, eastern Canada. We have a high pressure system up here. And this system, you can see the bend in the height lines. This is actually acting as like a block. This high pressure over nor the northwestern Atlantic, uh, southern Greenland, and eastern um, Canada is providing fairly nice weather for Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, but it's actually going to keep this system that's acting like a block here, and the system has nowhere to go. So it's going to follow the flow pattern and go around the high and push in where New Jersey is, and then it's going to head inland towards Pennsylvania and New York State. Now, if we take a look at the GFS wind model, you can almost see almost like a an eye where there's a calm area of winds, uh, almost like a donut circle here. This system will continue to head up and you see the darker fuchsias. Those are anywhere from 50 to 60 knot winds, that's 65 mile per hour winds. And the darker, or actually the um, white and gray colors, those are 80 knot winds 
that's on the order of 90 mile per hour winds, 85 to 90 mile per hour, and we actually see some of those filling in towards southern New England, Boston, Providence, Rhode Island, Hartford, Connecticut, and we also see some white areas showing up near Harrisburg and down towards Baltimore, where we actually see the GFS indicating that there's going to be some extremely strong winds, uh, even on the western side of the storm. Keep in mind, the strongest winds and rain are usually on the east side of a hurricane, but this isn't your typical hurricane, and by the time it reaches the northeast coast, it will not be a hurricane. So uh, the winds on the west side of the storm um, will actually be actually probably worse with this, because it'll, it'll act like a nor'easter. Now, let's very quickly um, take it back to the east coast um, overlay here. We've got Sandy, we've got a warm front out ahead of it that's starting to take on some cold core characteristics. The National Hurricane Center is not issuing hurricane warnings along the northeast corridor because this is not going to be a hurricane when it makes landfall. It's going to be a hybrid nor'easter. So, this system is going to actually, um, is prompting all these high wind warnings along the coast, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, New York, all high wind warnings, southern New England, high wind warnings, um, down to Washington DC, Baltimore, eastern Virginia, western West Virginia, and all, all through uh, western Virginia here. We have uh, Delmarva, all, every warning you can imagine is going on here, and along the coast, coastal flood warnings are also in effect because we expect the storm surge to be anywhere from 8 to 10 feet, especially between Atlantic City up on up to New Jersey and some of the southern areas of Long Island when we have the water piling up because when this thing takes a left turn, it's going to bring all that water with it and it's going to have no place to go but up to the north and to the west. So, other than that, um, not much else going on, nothing else pretty much compares to this. So, I'm let me show you a brief glimpse of my website. I have a place where you can post comments and I would I'm encouraging anybody who has any storm reports, any reports of flooding, wind damage, or storm surge or anything to, to place them either on my www.mediumark.com, on my YouTube account, any place you can post a comment on the video below, or you can of course the best place is to like Mediomark on Facebook. Um, you can actually post um, any questions or comments or pretty much all your storm reports there. I'm very interested to see uh, what kind of storm reports people get with this storm because it's going to be wide reaching and long lasting. So use my uh, social media pages as a way to uh, bring the storm reports together and I would also like to um, include a lot of those storm reports in my future videos in the coming days. So get out to Mediomark, like me, uh, like me on Facebook, Mediomark. Visit my website, www.mediomark.com. And also, um, for my hometown viewers, um, just let's zoom in on the map really quick here. We've got uh, high wind warning and flash flood um, watch in effect from tomorrow morning all the way through Tuesday night, Tuesday evening. So be prepared. Here's the Susquehanna River gauges. Uh, here's the one at Vestal. Uh, it has right about... We're, we're roughly about six to seven feet right now. It's going to move all the way up in Vestal to about 13, 14, 15 feet. So the model, this is the river model. Um, I think it might get a little higher than that, but keep in mind we're going to be in the eastern side of the storm here in Bingham, through Binghamton, Elmira, and Scranton. So most of the rain is going to fall south of Interstate 80 in Pennsylvania. So we're going to look on the order of probably two to four inches of rain. With locally, some areas could get five to six inches of rain. But we're starting to cut down on rainfall amounts and starting to up the, the wind amounts a little bit. Here in the southern tier, here's a snapshot of the highest wind gusts we'll probably get during the storm. This is from the GFS model. Probably get on the order of, these are 50 to 60 knot winds, 55, 60 miles per hour. So there you have it. That's, that's what we're looking at for a possible. And, and here's the uh, river flood gauge for Owego. Um, this storm uh, is probably going to creep up. It's, it's about 17, 18 feet right now, and it shows up by Wednesday morning. We'll probably be upwards of 24, 25 feet. That's still below flood stage. So uh, both the river gauges in our local area, the biggest ones, are expecting systems to remain at or below a minor flood stage. But some of the smaller cre creeks and streams could very well overflow um, their banks. So we're going to keep an eye on this. Keep in mind, during Tropical Storm Lee last year and Hurricane Irene, they predicted a lot less rainfall 
than was predicted. So I'm going with the total uh, rainfall out of this across Binghamton, Elmira areas in Scranton. I'm going with about three to five inches with some locally areas up to six to seven inches in some of those heavier bands. I'm meteorologist Mark Mulner. Um, once again, don't forget to like us at MeteoMark and uh, visit our website. And I'm going to leave you with the four-day forecast for the Binghamton, Elmira areas and all points in between. And northern Pennsylvania. This also includes northern Pennsylvania.